Hello and welcome to this NCFE provider session on NCFE entry level three functional skills qualification in mathematics standardization. The aim of this session is to help you with marking your entry level three maths functional skills papers. My name is Charmaine Phelps and I'm a provider development officer here at NCFE and it's my role to support our centres with the planning, delivery and preparation for assessments for their functional skills qualifications. Before viewing this recording, you will need the following documents to aid with the standardisation process. We've got the entry level three learner response and the mark scheme that goes along with that paper. There's two ways of uh, using this recording. You can either go through the paper and mark it yourself and then view the recording and see how your marks compare with the questions that we are focusing on during this recording. Alternatively, I will be sharing the learner responses with the mark scheme on every slide and will allow you the opportunity to pause so that you can decide what marks you would award before we show what uh, the marks that would be awarded. So we're going to look at these questions, 1D, 1E, 2D, 3A, B and D, and 4A and D. When using the mark scheme, it is important that you understand the annotation. So FT stands for follow through. Follow through marks are applied when there are earlier mistakes in the method. OE stands for or equivalent. All equivalent marks are available for the justification of the answer being presented in a different form to the mark scheme, such as 0.5 instead of a half or a different way of doing an addition or subtraction or multiplication. CAO is correct answer only. There refers to the learner's own values and you'll often see there alongside uh, FT for the follow through. So an incorrect answer when they followed it through in their process could still be awarded marks. Seen refers to the requirement to see the stated value in the learner's response or working out. Imp stands for implied. This refers to the learner's response implying correct working out used but not seen. Brackets indicate units are not required on final answers or for answers seen within working. BOD stands for benefit of doubt. Where the learner handwriting may be difficult to interpret, but previous working may indicate correct final answer. And anything that's shaded in the mark scheme indicates the requirement, requirements for full marks to be awarded. 1D, cakes need 475 grams of sugar. Cookies need 115 grams of sugar. Amy thinks she needs 590 grams of sugar in total. She rounds 475 grams and 150 grams to the nearest 100 to check her total. Show how Amy does this check. And here we have our learner answer and the mark scheme. You can pause the recording now if you'd like to mark this yourself. And I'll reveal how many marks would be awarded now. They would get two out of the three marks. The first mark is showing that they've rounded to the nearest 100. Now, this learner has attempted to round to the nearest 10. They've rounded 475 grams to 480. They rounded 115 to 110 rather than 120, but either way, they were supposed to round to the nearest 100. So we can't give them the first mark. However, they can get the next two marks, which are assessing subject content statement N2 which relates to addition. So marks can be awarded for their addition as the mark scheme allows their rounded values in their method. So they haven't written 500 plus 100, they've written 480 plus 110 and that's okay. And then they've got the final mark as well because they have correctly added together their values using their method to give 590 grams of sugar. So two out of three marks. One E, Amy bakes 22 cookies. Each cookie needs 12 chocolate chips. How many chocolate chips does Amy need in total? Show your working. So you can pause the recording and decide how many marks to award. 
I'll share that with you now. So two out of the two marks. The learner has correctly identified they need to multiply 22 by 12 to find the answer. So we've seen that. And they've correctly calculated that 22 times 12 is 264. So two marks out of the possible two. 2D, Amy needs to buy new tables for the cafe. She wants tables in shapes that have at least one line of symmetry. Tick all of the shapes that have at least one line of symmetry. We have our learner answer and the mark scheme. So you can pause the recording, decide if you'll give them a mark or not. And I'll reveal that now. So we can't give them a mark. Yes, they have um, indicated uh, A and B. However, they've also indicated C and D, which do not have symmetry. And they've not indicated E, which does have at least one line of symmetry. So they can't be awarded any marks there. 3A. Amy counts the hours that people work. She wants to show the results in a bar chart. Complete the bar chart. So we've got a title, we've got the number of hours, and we've got people's names. And we've been told we need to create a bar chart. There's four marks available. Here is our learner's answer, and we have the mark scheme. So you can pause the recording and decide how many marks you'd like to give. And I'll reveal that now. I can't get any marks. Um, first mark is for the suitable linear scale. That is not a linear scale. They've simply marked on those particular numbers of hours. And when it comes to the bars drawn correctly, although you could argue that they've they have plotted for Claire 36 and for Alex 25 and for Jamil 18 and for Sarah 32, but they haven't plotted bars and it does specifically say a bar chart. So unfortunately, they haven't drawn any bars at all. Um, so no marks can be awarded here, unfortunately. 3B, Claire earns £9.72 per hour. Round £9.72 to the nearest pound. And we have our learner's response and the mark scheme. How many marks would you give? And I'll show that now. No marks. The learner's rounded to the nearest 10 pence rather than to the nearest pound. So unfortunately, no marks. 3D. Jamil sells orange juice in bottles of different sizes. There's a 0.5 litre bottle, a 250 milliliter bottle, 0.2 litre bottle, and a 50 milliliter bottle. He thinks bottle D holds the most orange juice. Is Jamil correct? Give a reason for your answer. And you can pause the recording and decide how many marks you would award. And I'll reveal that now. Two out of two marks. The learner has stated that Jamil is not correct and given a valid explanation. So it says here any valid reason and they've calculated that A is 500 millilitres, they've calculated that C is 200 millilitres um, and they've shown here 0.5 litres hold the most orange juice which is um, half a litre and 50 millilitres is less than this so the explanation is valid. 4a the cafe had sales of 250 pounds and 90 pence in the morning the cafe had sales of 218 pounds and 20 pence in the afternoon what were the total sales round your answer to the nearest pound Three marks available. How many marks would you award here? I'll show that now. So two out of the three marks. The learner has added the values together. So we've got this mark here. 
they've come up with 469 pounds and 10 pence so they get the second mark however for the final mark they do seem to have a problem with rounding um they've rounded 469 pounds and 10 pence to 470 pounds and 10 pence so the third mark cannot be awarded 4d amy makes icing for different cakes the amount of icing goes up in sequence what is the next number in the sequence and we've got our learners answer how many marks would you award i'll reveal that now zero marks unfortunately the learner does appear to have identified the pattern however their answer is incorrect since 0.9 kilograms increased by 0.3 kilograms would be 1.2 kilograms rather than 0.12 kilograms and it does specifically say cao correct answer only would be accepted there Thanks so much for your time. I hope that you found this session helpful. If you have any questions following on from this, please feel free to get in touch. My email address and phone number are there on this final slide, charmainphelps at ncfe.org.uk, 0191240 8806. Thank you.